In a nutshell, what is copyright? Copyright is a form of protection provided by U.S. law, Title 17 of the United States Code, to authors of original works of authorship. Uh, the definition is found directly in this brochure from the United States Copyright Office and is available on the web at uh, copyright.gov. Copyright Law's foundation is in the U.S. Constitution by way of the so-called Copyright and Patent Clause, which is Article 1, Section 8, and I will read uh, directly from there. Uh, Article 1, Section 8, uh, quote, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries, end quote. Works must be fixed in a tangible medium of expression in order to be copyrighted, uh, such as a photograph or a written report, piece of artwork, etc. cetera. Uh, a tangible medium means that it has to be pen to paper, uh, fingers to keyboard, uh, anything on a computer hard drive or a CD-ROM, a flash drive, those would all be considered tangible media. Uh, it is important to note that ideas are not protected by copyright. Uh, it's the expression of ideas that are fixed in a tangible medium that are protected. So that old saying of so-and-so stole my idea, well if you never had your idea written down, uh, then it's not protected and uh, it can be taken uh, in that context. Copyright protects works in different areas such as literary works, dramatic, musical, and artistic works and it covers different types of uh, aspects of works such as poetry, novels, movies, and songs. Copyright owners automatically have certain exclusive rights and copyright covers both published and unpublished works and, and that's something that a lot of folks don't know about. Who is the copyright owner? The copyright owner is the creator of the work. The owner can be an individual person, ownership can be shared jointly among multiple owners, and even corporations can be copyright owners under the doctrine of work for hire. The person who does the following is the copyright owner, and here are just a couple, three examples of uh, different types of works. If the work is a photo, the person who took the photo is the copyright owner, not the person in the photo or the person to whom the camera belongs. If the work is handwritten, such as a letter, the person who wrote the letter is the copyright owner, not the person to whom the letter was sent. And finally, if the work was done on a computer, the person whose hands were on the keyboard is the copyright owner. In all three of these cases, there is copyright in the work as long as the work is in a tangible or fixed medium of expression. The person who created the work remains the copyright owner until the material is transferred to a publisher or to another party. Only the copyright owner can transfer copyright or grant permission to use it unless that person authorizes someone else to do so. Why is copyright transfer requested when I submit a manuscript for publication? First, it's important to note that authors automatically own copyright upon creation of their work before transferring copyright to a publisher. In terms of whether or not it's necessary, there are advantages to authors who transfer copyright to publishers, and this is a common practice among most STM publishers. STM meaning scientific, technical, and medical. When authors transfer copyright to a publisher, the publisher takes on the responsibility of granting permission for that material that appears in the paper. This takes the burden away from authors to decide whether or not they should grant permission or whether or not they should uh, charge a permissions or royalty fee. If someone infringes copyright and the publisher owns copyright to the paper, the publisher pursues the infringer. The author doesn't have to worry about doing that. And in exchange for the copyright transfer, looking at it from an ACS point of view, ACS grants back to authors a significant number of rights by way of the ACS Journal Publishing Agreement, or JPA for short. And this is a fairly common thread among most STM publishers. Once I publish a manuscript, can I reuse my figures for any other purpose? It depends upon the wording in the copyright transfer agreement or publishing agreement between the author and publishers. Many publishers, including ACS, grant a number of rights back to authors that will allow reuse of text 
and non-text material from their articles. This actually precludes the author from having to seek formal permission from the publisher. ACS's journal publishing agreement allows authors to use figures in a presentation, in the author's thesis, and in an article written by the author with appropriate credit. However, it is important to know that the author's university or publisher of a forthcoming article may require that the author obtain written permission from the copyright owner. ACS uses the RightsLink permission system to process permission requests. For publishers other than ACS, uh, my best advice is to check the policies of those other publishers to determine what they permit or grant back to authors. If I want to use figures published by another author, do I need to get permission? If you didn't create the figures, you do need to obtain permission from the copyright owner or publisher and give credit to the source, even if the material you want to use is unpublished. Before you contact a publisher for permission, you should check their website to see how they want you to ask for permission. You're never wrong in asking for permission, but you could be wrong if you don't ask for permission. What is the difference between exclusive and non-exclusive copyright transfer? First, let's review exclusive rights, which can be viewed from both the standpoint of copyright exclusive rights granted under Title 17, the copyright law, as well as exclusive rights when we're viewing this from a permissions perspective. Section 106 of Title 17 grants rights to copyright owners that automatically attach upon creation of a work. These include the following, the rights to reproduce the work, to distribute the work, to create derivative works, to display the work, and the rights to publicly perform the work. This is what we refer to in the field as the copyright bundle of rights. These exclusive rights are divisible, meaning that the copyright owner can keep all the rights or can license or grant permission to other parties to reuse the work. It may be helpful to think of this so-called bundle as the game of pickup sticks, where each color represents a different type of right, print, electronic, etc., where each stick may be separately transferred or licensed. The blue sticks represent the reproduction right, the red sticks represent the distribution right. What I can do as the copyright owner, I can keep all these rights to myself and not grant the rights to other parties, or if I so choose, I can grant print rights or distribution rights to one party or to multiple parties and the representation there would be um, giving a stick to each party that I'm granting that particular right to. Uh, or again, as mentioned, uh, I don't have to do that if I don't want to and I can keep all the rights to myself. Regarding permissions, a copyright owner can grant exclusive rights or non-exclusive rights to others to reuse the work. If we're granting exclusive rights, it means that the copyright owner is granting to only one party and can't grant rights to anyone else. Non-exclusive permissions are much more flexible in that typically the copyright owner can grant permission to multiple parties for, generally speaking, one-time only use of the copyrighted material. But again, the main difference there is that multiple parties have the right uh, to use the particular work. There can also be shared rights between the author and the publisher, and in the case of ACS and the journal publishing agreement, if we look at supporting information, supporting information is one of the areas where the rights are shared. What kind of copyright transfer are authors asked to grant to ACS? When an author publishes with ACS, it's an exclusive transfer of copyright, meaning that the author can't submit that article to another publisher if they're submitting it to ACS and signing the ACS journal publishing agreement. It's an exclusive arrangement. It's an exclusive transfer of copyright. It cannot be shared with any other publishers or any other parties. For supported information, it's a non-exclusive copyright transfer. Essentially here, the rights are shared between ACS and the author. This means that ACS can use supporting information from an article in any manner it sees fit or in any manner that it wants to. Uh, it also means that the author has the ability to reuse the supporting information in any manner he or she wants to reuse it. Remember though with the JPA, it's an agreement between the author and ACS. So this non-exclusive arrangement only refers to ACS or to the author. If a third party wants to reuse supporting information, 
the third party would still be required to seek formal permission to reuse that material. And they would um, either go through ACS to reuse that material or they could go through the author to reuse that material.